This video is to, to learn about multiplying numbers. We are going to be dealing with just whole numbers in this particular video. So the first thing I want to talk about is something called the distributive property. So in the distributive property, what we learn is that multiplication distributes over addition. So A stands for a number and B stands for a number and C stands for a number. So we say A is going to be multiplying times B. So we say A times B. And then we add to that, because of the addition here, the A multiplied times C. And that is a really important property as we advance into algebra concepts. But it is actually a really important concept because it is how we multiply um, two-digit numbers by one-digit numbers, two-digit numbers by two-digit numbers, etc. And the idea of expanded notation that you probably heard talked about a few times in a math career is what we use in order to do that multiplication. Now we do long multiplication using the distributive property whether we know it or not. So I'm actually going to use my video here to just give you a little glimpse of that. Now whether it makes any impact or not, whether you fast forward through it, um, ignore it, it doesn't matter. I just am going to put it out there because it may help some people. All right, basic multiplication facts that you need to know. You need to know that zero times anything is always zero. You need to know one times anything is the thing itself. So when I say that, that one times anything is the thing itself, what I'm saying is if I have five multiplied by one, then it's the thing, the five, itself. So anything times one is the thing itself. Five times one is five. And then you also need to make sure you have a really good handle on the math facts that I've listed out on this page. Now, in your math facts, there are many, many, many patterns. And I think you should try to look for as many as possible. Now, I put this math fact chart in color. And I think that that should pop some really, really important patterns for you right here. You see the blues go across here at the top and the blues go down here in the column. That fact that the blues go across here in the row as well as the column is what we know as the commutative property of multiplication. Now if you watched my uh, video earlier on addition, you saw the addition property um, that is uh, the commutative property of addition. Well that also exists for multiplication. And what that means is if I multiply 1 times 2, it's the same as multiplying 2 times 1. Now just like with addition, there were fact families. Well, with multiplication, there are also fact families. And the fact families in multiplication have two division problems as well, because division is the inverse operation for multiplication. So that's one thing that you should notice in here is the commutative property exhibited by the same row and column colors here. Now something else you should notice is what I've highlighted across this diagonal. Across this diagonal there is um, a bunch of numbers that are very special to us. These numbers are what we call our perfect squares. They're where we get 1 times 1, and 2 times 2, and 3 times 3, and 4 times 4, and 5 times 5, and 6 times 6, and 7 times 7, and 8 times 8, and 9 times 9, and 10 times 10, and 11 times 11, and 12 times 12. Now something else that I think you should really pay attention to is the fact that multiplication is simply repeated addition. So when I say um, one, 2 times 3, what that really, really means is that I'm saying 2 plus 2 plus 2. I'm repeatedly adding 2 3 times, and 2 times 3 Looking up here, 2 times 3, or 2 times 3, is 6. And 2 plus 2 is 4, and 4 plus 2 is 6. And so you see, repeated addition of 2, 3 times, is going to give you 6. Now that also works for repeated addition of 3, 2 times, right? 3 plus 3 is indeed 6, and that is represented as 2 times 3 as well. 
because we've used three as an add-in two times. And that's our link. And that's another pattern that's really, really useful because you can see that pattern as you go across here. You see two plus two is four, plus two more is six, plus two more is eight. Let's go down here and try it with the sevens. We start out with seven and then we add seven is 14 and then we add seven is 21 and then we add seven is 28. That doesn't look like a 28, does it? Let's fix that. Let's make sure that looks like a 28 like it should. There's a little better. And that's 28 and then 28 plus seven is 35 and so on and so forth. So those are some patterns that you might notice. And maybe there are more that you'll notice. The more patterns that you could recognize, the stronger your multiplication skills can become. Now, let's talk about that distributive property that I talked about earlier. So the distributive property, remember, said I take this number out here and I'll multiply it by that number. So 10 times 3 is 30. And then plus, now I'm going to multiply 3 times 3, which is 9. And then I'll add those up, and 3 plus 9 is 39. Okay, now this is the idea of expanded notation, right? I've taken 13, and I've said that's 1, 10, plus 3, 1's. That's one way of writing in an expanded notation. Or I can simplify this as a 10 plus a 3, which is what I did. And that, again, is called expanded notation. And that gives us 39. Well, the long multiplication, and I'm sure you're aware of long multiplication that you may have seen in the past, that's exactly what we're doing. See, we're taking this digit here, the ones digit, and we're multiplying it by the ones digit here, three times three, that gives us the nine. And then when we multiply three times the tens digit, we're making sure that we put that over here in the tens place, right? Because when you multiply a ones times a tens digit, you get a tens digit. So three times one gives us three, three. and that's in the tens digit, so it's 30. So this is 39, and that's how these two things relate. And we can do multiplication like that over and over again. And it's the same thing as what we're doing in long multiplication, it's just we're doing it in a shorthand sort of way. Let's try it again here with 6 uh, times 17. So I have 6 times 10, which gives me 60, plus 6 times 7, which gives me 42. And then when I add those, I see that I'm going to add the ones places, right? If you need to stack them on top of each other, don't hesitate to do that. That's really good practice if you need it. 2 plus 0 is 2, and 4 plus 6, which is 10. And we see it's 110, uh, 102. Now this is the idea that becomes carrying in multiplication. When we get a digit that doesn't belong in a place value, right, it's, got, it's moved up in place values, 42, we're going to carry that and then add it in. So when we do this with long multiplication, we see 7 times 6, which is 42, and we carry the 4 up here. And then what we do is 6 times 1, that's our 60, right? And then plus the 4 that's in the tens place here. So 6 times 1 is 6 plus 4, which is 10. And you see you get the exact same number. Now I could continue on in this vein and show you how to do this for double digit by double digit, but I think it gets a little confusing after that and I'd rather not show it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to practice some double digit and some triple digit multiplication so that we remember how to do that. So again with multiplication we usually uh, put the larger number at the top. A um, larger number meaning place number of place values. It's that's the more important thing. So I put 25 times 17, and then I'm going to multiply just like I did before. So 7 times 5 is 35. So I put the 5 here, but I have to carry the 3. Now 7 times 2 is 14, and then I add in 3, so that's 17. And then I'm going to move over and I'm going to start multiplying by the tens digit in the 17. So that means that when I multiply a tens times a ones, I'm going to get a tens place. So what we do is we either put a zero here or some people put an x, and then we're going to be getting a tens place value. So 1 times 5 
is 5 and 1 times 2 is 2 and then we go ahead and we add them 5 and 0 is 5 7 and 5 is 12 and 1 and 1 and 2 is 4 and there's our value there okay let's try that one more time with the triple digit by double digit so my triple digit 183 would go on the top even if it wasn't written first that's still how I'd write it because it really bugs my mind to do it with the small number first because I've been doing it that way for so long and now I multiply 2 times 3 which is 6 2 times 8 which is 16 so I have to carry the 1 2 times 1 which is 2 plus the next 1 which is 3 and then I'm going to be moving over to the tens digit so I have to hold a place value here because I'll get a tens place 9 times 3 which is 27 so I carry the 2 here and then 9 times 8 which is 72 plus 2 which is 74 so I put the 4 down and then I put the 7 out here now some people are a little confused about what to do when you have to carry for several different times several different times how do you keep track of what number it is some people will cross the numbers out that they've already used I just kinda of put them in a particular order so that I know which digit goes which with which carry it's up to you it's totally your call 9 times 1 is 9 plus 7 is 16 and so now we add these and 6 and 0 is 6 6 and 7 is 13 carry the 1 1 and 3 is 4 plus 4 is 8 6 and 0 is 6 1 and 0 is 1 and so there would be our final answer on that one. Alright, so now let's do a couple for you to try on your own. How about you try 12 times 239 and 121 times 231 and see how it goes. So pause the video and do them on your own and then come back and check. Okay, so I would start by writing 239 because it's the larger number and then multiplied by 12. So we have 2 times 9 which is 18, carry the 1. 2 times 3 which is 6 plus 1 which is 7. 2 times 2 which is 4. Now because I'm going over to multiply by 10's I'm going to hold my place in the 1's place. 1 times 9 is 9. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2 and then I add these. So I have 8 and 0 is 8, 7 and 9 is 16, carry the 1, three, uh, 4 and 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8, and 2 plus 0 is 2. And so there's my answer on that one. Now, on the next one, now on the next one, I have 121, times 231 and it doesn't matter which one goes first because they're both hundreds place 1 times 1 is 1 1 times 2 is 2 1 times 1 is 1 put in the 0 to hold the one, uh, ones place I'm multiplying by tens 3 times 1 is 3 3 times 2 is 6 3 times 1 is 3. Now I'm moving over to the hundreds place, so I'm going to have to hold the zero, the ones place and the tens place. So I'm multiplying ten, uh, hundreds by ones, which gives me hundreds. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And 2 times 1 is 2. And now I'm going to add these up. So 1 and uh, 0 is 1. 2 and 3 is 5. 1 and 6 is 7 plus 2 is 9. 3 plus 4 is 7 and 2 plus nothing is 2 and so there's my new answer just like that alright so hopefully you're getting more comfortable with multiplication next time we'll probably be talking about division